Happy holidays. I'm meteorologist Pete Parsons with the Oregon Department of Forestry. Lots going on right now. We just had Thanksgiving. I hope you had a great one. And we've got Christmas coming up soon. Between now and then, we've got the official start of winter on December 21st this year at 7.03 a.m. That is going to be the shortest day of the year. Interesting that winter starts on the shortest day of the year, and then the days start getting longer beginning on Sunday. How about that? So you have that to look forward to if you don't like the, the long nights. We're going to look forward now at the January through March period, and I think we're in for quite a variety of weather, which I'll try to highlight uh, as we go forward here. We'll start off by looking at the sea surface temperatures. Again, if you're not familiar with my method of forecasting, it's an analog-based uh, forecast, or you could call it an AI-based forecast. It's using past historical information to help us see into the future. I find years in the past with similar sea surface temperatures in the tropical Pacific, down here where I have these arrows pointing, this zone right here in the tropics. And I, if you can find years that are lining up with the current year down there, and then step those years forward in time and see what happened, it gives you a little insight as to what can happen because those tropical Pacific temperatures are a driver of the worldwide jet stream pattern, and that affects our weather very much here in the Pacific Northwest. It's by no means a perfect way to forecast, but it does give us just a hedge, basically, from otherwise just using the 30-year climate normals. And that's my goal, is to try to beat those 30-year climate normals and give you a, an idea of, of how we might have a, a, a particular event happen this year that maybe isn't something we see every year, like the big atmospheric river events that we're getting now. That is something that is typical of a La Nina, which is what we're in right now. Colder than normal temperatures down here in the tropics, indicated by the blue colors. The top panel are the actual temperatures in degrees centigrade, bottom panel are departures from average. So these blue areas are colder than normal, white or near normal, oranges and reds above normal, and down here we're in a weak La Nina or a cold uh, INSO phase, INSO meaning El Nino Southern Oscillation. That's that area right here. Also notice the North Pacific. We've got warmer waters out here in the central and western areas of the North Pacific, and then near or a little below average uh, across the northeastern portion of the North Pacific right along our coast. That's the cool phase of the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. That has an impact on our weather as well, but this is the main driver down here, and that's the one that I key on when I look for my analog years. The years that I found that most closely match where we've been and where we are are 1967, 81, and 2017. That's going up through uh, November and into December. So we have to step those years forward on the forecast for January through March. So it'd be 68, 82, and 2018. So that can be a little confusing. But to find those years, I have to look at where we've been and where we are. This is the last couple of years. The thick line is the current period, 2024-25, and the green and red and, and blue lighter ones are the three top analog years. Notice how they track along fairly closely, coming out of El Nino into a, a weak La Nina or borderline La Nina last winter, and then back up toward neutral last summer, and then back down close to the La Nina again currently, those are the best years that I could find. They're not perfect, but I'm going to time step those years forward, see what they did, and we'll use that as a guide to predict what could happen here over the next three months. We've also got, as I mentioned, that Pacific Decadal Oscillation. We're in this negative or cool phase where most of the North Pacific is above normal, ironically, in the cool phase. The cooler waters relative to average are right off of our coast. And here's the index associated with that. Notice those three analog years again. They're way up here in the neutral phase. Where Here's where we've been down here in the cold phase. That doesn't line up as well. Again, I key on the tropics, but I do compare it to the North Pacific to see how it is. It's not great, but there aren't any years that I could find that are a lot better. Does this create air in the analogs? Of course it does. If all the indices lined up perfectly, it'd be a terrific analog and would probably do a really good job of forecasting the weather. We don't have enough years to work with. I really only got about 75 good years of, of ONI data, tropical data, and there's more weather data that goes back farther, but we just don't have the good analog data. So this is the best we can do. 
Can't find a year that matches up with everything. But I'm going to go with them. Understand there's going to be some air in this. That's why I showed it to you. Here's the whole thing, the whole picture of the temperature in the Pacific Basin. This is a composite from November, the whole month, of the top three analogs. And they show colder than normal waters down here in the, trop in the tropical Pacific. A little bit of cooler here and about an average up here. This is November 2025. It has more cooling in here, colder waters than average than the analogs. These were more in a cool in so neutral phase, and this is a weak La Nina, so that's not a perfect match, but again, it's the best I could find. Notice there are some cooler waters here that line up pretty well with the analogs. This, however, is warmer than what we have here. It's similar shape, but a little different. So again, the best we can do, not bad. Based on those three years, NOAA has a tool I can give the average upper air pattern at about 18,000 feet. Winds blow parallel to these lines, so like this, so trough here, ridge here. The, the, on the right are the anomalies, departures from average, and that helps us see the, the, the changes in the flow. Look at this big area of blues and purples. That means more troughing than normal in the upper atmosphere expected over Canada in January from the analogs. Did all the analogs have the troughing in the same place? No, this is an average, a composite of all three. Um, notice that we had anomalous troughing over Oregon in two of the three analogs, 68 and 82, but we had anomalous ridging in 2018. That's going to be a theme as we go through the three-month period. In each of the three months, Two of the top three analogs did one thing, and the other analog did another thing, and they weren't always the same ones. It switched around. Because when you get into these weak La Nina situations, or cold in so neutral, which all these years were in, you get extreme ridges and troughs, and, and depending on exactly where they line up, it changes everything. But you do tend to get more extreme events, like we're seeing right now with these, what we call atmospheric river events. Now we used to call them pineapple connection. That's one of the extreme events that happens with these scenarios, with these years. What we're seeing now is not unexpected. I would expect at least one atmospheric river event when you got these analog years. That's the way it works. It doesn't mean we're going to have atmospheric rivers all winter long. You can have them and then and you go out of it and go to the next pattern where you're under a ridge or maybe you're getting cold air from the north. So in January, two of the years had a big trough. The other one did not. 68 and 82 brought enough cold air into the Pacific Northwest and into Oregon for Western Valley snow events. 2018 did not. That will change as we go into February. All three analog years brought cold air into Oregon and gave us low elevation snow at some point in either January or February. They didn't do it in November, December necessarily, but they did in January, February. And that's we got that part of the forecast right, that the colder weather would come later in the winter, and that does appear that it's going to be the case, or technically inofficially winter, which starts here in just a couple of days. So this is tricky. Now, I put up the graphics. The graphics are a direct mathematical average of all three years. And remember, 2018 was the warm one, and the other two were cold. The, the blowtorch warm, as I call it, 2018, masks the cooler than average 68 and 82 analogs. So the departures from average show up positive for January. Does that mean we're going to have a warmer than normal January? No, it doesn't mean that. That's just the mathematical average of all three. The point that I'm trying to make here is that you can have extremes in either direction, even with very similar analogs in the tropical Pacific because you get big ridges and big troughs in the jet stream form with these weak La Nina situations, and exactly where they line up makes an enormous difference. Two of the three years were colder than normal for January. Just one of them was warmer, but it was so much warmer it skewed everything warm. That pattern is going to continue for the three-month period. Watch it unfold here. The precipitation forecast, same idea. It was more consistent, though, except 82 had above average mountain snow. The other two had below average mountain snow. Go figure. But the precipitation was closer to average on the three. Does that mean it's going to be average? No. But are we going to continue to get these massive atmospheric rivers through here like we are right now? Probably not. You get some of that, then you get something else.
That's, that's what happens. That's why I said last month with this pattern, La Nina, if you don't like the weather you have this week, hang on, because you're going to usually see a market change within just a couple of weeks to some entirely different weather pattern. So if you like variety, hey, this is your winner. I think you're going to get it. February, there's some ridging more offshore than normal based on all three analog years, near average over us in terms of the upper air, but the flow coming down, the doors open more from the northwest. Now here's the deal. 1982 and 2018 had stronger jet stream strength over. So remember, 2018 was the really warm January, Big Ridge, not in February. Now 1968, which had more action over us in January by February, it puts the ridging over us. So it's just a flip in those years. But they all have a trough one month and a ridge the next. Mountain snowfall vary considerably you know, of those years. So diverse again, but this time 2018 was the one that was colder. When it was warmer the month before, 68 was the blowtorch mild one. And guess what? It counters the other two. See the pattern? One month is warmer than normal, but it's so much warmer than normal, it counters the cooler than normal months from the other two. So here's how I would look at this. Same thing's going to happen in March, by the way. I would look at it this way. You have three analog years. Every year, every month, one of them is warm, and the other two are cold. So that tells me that maybe two of the three months are going to be cooler than average and one of them will be warmer than average, that kind of deal, even though the graphics show all three of them warmer than average. So the gap take these you know, mathematical averages with a grain of salt. This is, a, this is one of the reasons I created this video. I can't explain all this in a PowerPoint presentation. You, you can go on to the, the website that I'll give you at the end and look at the PowerPoint presentation. I have more maps there than I do here. But getting this explanation helps. You have to take these maps with a little grain of salt, and I try to explain things down here as best I can. I don't have a lot of confidence in the precipitation forecast because two of the three years were wetter than average, and 2008 was drier. Again, that's the flip. We're going to see flipping back and forth, warm and dry to cool and wet, boom, 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 probably for the next three months. Well, so we're seeing it already here in December. December. Blowtorch warm, very wet, especially northern Oregon. Watch it flip. It will flip. We're not going to get that for three straight months. That's what the analog show. Isn't going to happen. I'm highly confident in that much. If it does, that's, that's one on me, right? It's not going to. We're going to see big swings. March, here we go again. More swings. 1982 and 2018 had dominant southwest flow. 82 started to develop a split flow with ridging centered more east of here. It was already starting to move into an El Nino. It turned out to be a pretty strong El Nino uh, in 82, 83. The other one's not as much. So the analogs, though, in general, had more troughing over Oregon, generally centered southwest of here with southwest flow. Two of the three had predominant southwest flow, which is going to hopefully bring us some mountain snow into here, although they, they, they weren't all big mountain snow years. Uh, but, but one of them wasn't too bad. So again, analogs had high variability. You take all three years together, you get, oh, look, above average temperatures. But 1982 and 2018 were colder than normal. This time, 68 was warmer than average. So you had a different year warmer than average each time. Precipitation, again, close to average, maybe a little bit below but some of the years out above, okay? So there you go. Again, for the three month period, analogs had some extent of troughing over the Pacific Northwest, more than normal, the troughing, the blue colors are more troughing than normal, but it varied month by month. It's not going to necessarily be a trough over us the whole time. It's kind of back and forth with different variations throughout it. Uh, 68 had more ridging centered just east of Oregon. The other two had it centered more out here, which opens the door more for cold air dumps coming down from the north. I think we're going to see at least one, maybe a couple of cold air dumps coming down from the north sometime in the uh, January, February period. And like I said, it's a mark on me if we don't get some low elevation snow. There's every indication that we will this winter. If you're a snow lover in the valley, you like the snow, where's all the snow? You know, hang on. It's coming. It's coming. Likely we'll get some, even down to the lowest elevations. 
especially northwest Oregon and through the gorge, that kind of thing. Uh, you're, you're, again, it would surprise me if we don't get it. Let's put it that way. And I get surprised sometimes. You know, learn from that. So for the January through March period, the temperatures show above normal. There's a real good chance two of the three months will be below normal. But overall, it may be above normal because you might have one that's a you know blow towards warm month, kind of like we're having here in December. Maybe we're getting all the warm weather out of the way now in December, and it won't be as warm. But there'll be warm periods. That's my point, and there'll be cold periods. So far, we've seen the warm periods. Do not expect that to continue through the winter, all the way through. Precipitation, closer to average, some dry periods, some wet periods, and that balances out. Two of the three years had below average mountain snow. One of them had above average mountain snow. 82 was the one with above average. It was well above average. So I can't tell you which way it's going to go. If you look at the Climate Prediction Center forecast right now, they're kind of, they're, they're bordering on equal chances, they say, of, of like above below normal temperatures precip. That's not because they expect average. It's because they couldn't, they didn't know which way it was going to go either. They know it's probably going to go markedly one way or the other, but they don't know which way. So they put up an equal chances. So you have to look at their graphic and understand when it shows white equal chances. Oh, we're going to have average weather. No, that's not what they're saying either. What they're saying is they don't know which way it's going to go. Because their tools, they use analog methods too, like this. And they use dynamic models as well. And their tools show they're not sure which way it's going to go. I agree with them. I don't know either. So be prepared for back and forth. Variation throughout the winter. Here's the website where I house everything right there. It's off of the Oregon Department of Agriculture's Natural Resource page. And on that, you get the forecast, also the latest verification. I verify this every month. I've got videos for both of them. Whenever either of them are updated, you can get a, an email alert. You have to sign up to get those. How about that? Lots going on. Long video. Get ready for a roller coaster ride this winter. If you don't like the wet weather we've been having, it will change. And if you want snow, I think you got a real good shot at that. Again, hope you have a wonderful Christmas. If you have any feedback, or if I didn't answer some of your questions, I'll try to do so personally. You can give me an email or a phone call, and I'll get back to you again. Have a very Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and a great New Year. And we'll give you an update next month, and we'll take a look at it again and see if we aren't flirting with some snow by then. All right, take care.